So we kind of touched on this a little bit already, but uh, your bodybuilding career is your goal to go pro. It, I mean, I just want to look as best as I can, mm-hmm. and I want to get as good as I can at it, and I want to be able to use what I've uh, built and created for myself. And I mean, I think I can do a really good posing routine, man. Now, like, how, do you <laughs> like? I think I could do. A, I think if I trained it and it spent the time and I'm setting up for it, I think my posing routine could be really freaking mm-hmm. good. And, and I, w- I want a really good posing routine. I want to look the best I've ever looked, mm-hmm. and then. You know, let let the rest fall where it's going to fall. Now, do you work with somebody with your posing, or uh, will you? Oh What's yeah, it? yeah. So uh, I'm going to get some coaches for that, mm-hmm. uh, just based on availability. Um, so I had some coaches lined up for before the Arnold, but of course that was going to be my contest, but it got canceled. And I'm not posing practicing right now because uh, I want to do a thousand pound bar spider squat with Dave, which you did, <laughs> which I did, which you did, yeah, which I did. So, you know, I've, I've been playing with my lifts more and stuff, but the posing will come back in and in a, probably a few months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about that squat a little bit. That was, that was quite impressive first and foremost to come out here and never really do that version of that squat mm-hmm. and to hit that number. Congratulations. That was that was big stuff. Well, thank you. Though I do think you have more in the tank, but I guess that's more of a... Well, I had, <laughs> I had Dave give me all the secrets. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that lift has actually got a lot of secrets in it. There's a lot of foot placement and stuff. I, that would have taken me a little while to figure out on my own, but he mm-hmm. knew everything. It was like, push your feet forward, uh, spread your stance more, uh, mark where your feet are, spread your knees. I wouldn't <laughs> push the, I was just all this crazy, like the band is going to do this. You have to, like, the bar is going to squish you more, so you have to change the mono rack. It's like, well, I wouldn't have figured this crap out, on, <laughs> you know, on my own without a lot of, you know, time. So mm-hmm. that's why I was able to do as much as I did today. I had someone who knew all the secrets to the lift. So. I'm an expert at one thing. Yeah. <laughs> so the high box, what do we call this? The high box spider bar reverse band. Sometimes I put chains on. Oh, yeah? You know, just because I can't. Yeah, you know, just to make it time. even more complicated. But a lot of people, I think the, um, the cool thing about having him do it is mm-hmm. sometimes, kind of as I was telling him, I don't know if, if I'm good at it or not, right? Because part of this whole post-competitive life post hip replacement life is to do a lot of things I've never done before so I can never compare it to what I used to be okay because it would just make me mad yeah because it'd be like because I'm doing that now with the bench because I'm starting to I, I finally was able to get the bar to touch my chest again after forever it still hurts like hell but as I'm building it back up I'm running into these conversations with myself like okay this is kind of like a I don't want to say a PR yeah but, but it is. But it still sucks compared to what I used to do. So that basis of comparison is a big mind fuck, yeah. which I just try to avoid. So if I come up with something like a reverse spider, I have no idea what's good with that. Right. <laughs> and then nobody else really does it because they just look at me like I'm out of my mind. Yeah. I'm like, that's fine. I'm doing what I want to do. It's heavy for me when I get to a certain point. I got something to train for. Uh-huh. So I never know. And as I was telling you, the one time one of the guys out here just got underneath <laughs> one of the when I was in an early phase of training that, I just got underneath it, did it for 10. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's that. And I, I used to do the, the well, the cha- you did the band, the deadlift chain thing too, right? Yeah. Okay, so that used to be another one where I would do high reps with 275 and like 10 chain per side. Yeah. With the, and as many reps as I could. So it was like, for a while, it was like 9, then 12, then 15. And it was also on blocks. Okay. You know, so it was from the below the knee. What I'm trying to do is to create a chaotic environment that's the safest for me to do so I won't destroy myself in uh-huh. too bad of a way. Yeah. And um, I was doing that. I was training that one time, and I think it might have been Brandon Smitley, like one of our sponsored lifters, uh-huh. a wider guy. He just walked up to it and just ripped it up like it was nothing. I'm like, oh, man, I <laughs> suck. Yeah. But the pressure is what I like about it, which you got to see, the, the pressure in your head, Yeah. you know, with the heavier weight. So that, that kind of validated that I still kind of suck, you know, compared to what I used to, but I don't suck as bad as I thought I did. <laughs> but now he could have done way more. You know, the, the, your starting point was like 200 pounds heavier than where my starting point would be with that. Yeah. So what I guess the other thing is that I don't want to say, 
<laughs> I want to say it kind of like makes the lift legit because it's totally not. But more it, so, more <laughs> so. But it's not. I mean, more it's a so. reverse pan thing that takes a ton of weight off. But to see somebody else come out of it, like holy crap, that was heavy. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, now at least now, probably nobody else in the world understands why I do it. Yeah. Now you kind of get yeah, it, yeah. right? Because you're uh -huh. underneath there, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's just your head's getting squished. Yeah. It's just like, but it's, obviously the pressure's not on your head, but that's a lot of pressure yeah. on your body. Because you yeah. still need to stabilize the weight at the top. Like, regardless of reverse bands, like, you're still unracking. Oh, that yeah, way. yeah. That stuff's kind of wavering, so it's, you don't want to go down. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't get back up, but you can. Because yes. the band tension is going to lie you at the bottom, so it's it's. it's <laughs> I had to try it. It's yes, like, yes. I it's, wanted, and it's to me, it's fun. And yeah. it, when I get to a certain weight with that too, it's also, I have to get serious. Mm -hmm. Like there's a certain, and that's what I. That's probably what I'm addicted to the most with this training thing. Yeah. Is yeah, I, I understand you got to do the monotony of the training. I get that probably more than most people, but there's when, there's those sets, yeah. right, and those singles and stuff like. You can't be you. Right, I got to yeah. be somebody else. Mm -hmm. I love that shit. You yeah, because you get it's got it becomes super serious. Like if I don't get under there, the way I'm supposed to, I'm not gonna pick it up. Mm. Right. Like I have to be under there the way I am, and then for the last set, it's like okay, I need to go this completely other. No, I don't do that every workout, obviously. Yeah. Right. right. It <laughs> but it's but, fun, but as someone who has seen it since I started here in March, I mean, it, when I would see it online, I was like, oh, that's super intense. And then you kind of get. Uh, almost a little jaded by it. I see mm -hmm. him do the do the lift the whole time, but then see somebody new do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shit, that is hard. Like that is a very difficult lift to do, regardless of boxes, bands, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be cool to see when the video comes out. Is on your last attempt, you get that like split second of oh shit. Yeah, that was <laughs> the, the last attempt was the only uh, set I did where I stood up with it, but I didn't actually get it up and i was like god please don't unrack it right now in the mono because i'm just going to collapse mm -hmm. and you guys are good enough not to move, yeah. the, move the thing out of the way well, to be fair it wouldn't have <laughs> you didn't move it that much oh, okay <laughs> i mean i was just like please don't yeah and then i had to Ooh, this is serious and then yeah. five or six seconds later i was able to actually get it up to where you could release well there's there's a and i told him you know, on your video, some of the reasons why I do it, you know, because of the hip replacements and I'm trying to control my stupidity. The other thing that you saw with that is I can also keep the wear, the volume, uh -huh. the number of reps way down with that and still go super heavy. So count how many reps you really did yeah. until the top set. It was probably under 10 for sure. Yeah. Right. So think about that for a minute. You were able to do a maximum effort on a lift that required less than 10 reps to really warm up. Right. Right. So yeah. I have, you know, two hip replacements. I'm trying to not accumulate a lot of wear and tear on those. Mm -hmm. So that compared to say I was going to work up and do a heavy um, uh, ass to grass squat. Right. It's going to be way more than 10 reps. Oh, yeah. You know, to be able to get there. So I'm lowering the wear and tear. You know, so there's a lot of I can justify this a million different ways. Yeah. 